raced 10 years ago. That was our first flying tournament, and now it's an annual event. It was great that a woman won it the first year. We women are proud of you, an inspiration to us all. We're hoping you'll compete in the race this year. No, my flying days are over. An airplane race is fine for young people like you, but not me. Today's the big day of the annual airplane race. I wish they'd let me fly in it. Children aren't allowed. Who do you think is going to win the race today? Well, they say that Floppy's father is everybody's favorite. Oh, Rubear and Laura. Minnie Lewis! Aren't you two going to watch the big airplane race today? Oh, sure. We're going with Mommy. Your mother doesn't seem very interested in the race. I don't know why. I wish she'd entered the race herself. You know, in the race ten years ago, she won. No, no really? really? Just look at these pictures I took of the race. Nobody ever told me my mommy won the airplane race. That's great. I didn't know about this either. You know, I've been trying to get her to compete in the race today. She says no. Gee, that's too bad. I bet if she wanted to, she could win again. Hmm. You know, I've just had a little idea. Maybe we can get her in that race yet. Can you keep a secret? Mm -hmm. children before you were born. That's nothing. Oh, Mommy, please fly in the race today. I bet you're a wonderful flyer. I'll bet you win the race again. Nope, not interested. But you'll take us to the race, won't you? Oh, sure. We'll all go and watch it. Yay! You sure nobody sees you putting it together? Okay. Now your job is to get your mother to the airfield. You can count on us! going to be my papa. Just a minute, you guys. You're forgetting my papa's plane. His engine's got a supercharger, so nobody's going to beat him. You've been gone. Oh, dear. I'm too late. What's the matter? I was hoping I could get one of 
of the contestants in the race to take this bottle to Polo Airport. Oh, it's too bad you missed them. They're all on their way to Polo Airport because that's the finish line. Oh, what am I going to do? Whose plane is that over there? That belongs to Mrs. Koala. Oh, please, Mrs. Koala. Would you please rush this bottle to Polo Airport? It's a matter of life and death, Mrs. Koala. A sweet little girl needs it badly. She's waiting in the emergency room. You've got to help her.
for Mommy, but she did win the race. Mommy's a winner without even trying. What a fine-looking group of children. I hope you'll enjoy our museum. It looks nice. I'm enjoying it already. I'm glad to hear that. Have a look at this vase. It was crafted more than 500 years ago by a master potter named McGillicuddy. Absolutely priceless. That means very valuable. Now, I must warn all you children to be careful. Many of our exhibits are both precious and fragile. That means easily broken. So watch it. Yes, yes sir! sir. Uh, you three over there, did you hear what I said? Yeah. Mm. Now we'll all move on to the next section. Walk this way. How come a thing like that can get to be so very valuable? Hey, don't stare at that thing so hard you may break it. Hey, what are you doing? Give me back my hat. <laughs> now stop that. I want my hat. Hey, come on. Hey, I'm over here. Whoa. whoa. Oh! It wasn't me throwing it over there. Me neither. It was Nick. Oh, what'll I do? Oh. Oh, holy man. Oh. I wonder what happened to Nick. Vaz has been stolen. Help, police! about this 
Laura. Oh, Rubber, you mean you stole it? No, I didn't steal it. But I got my finger caught in it. Oh, that's too bad. I'll help you. Nice to your little sister. Yes, Mommy. Make up and be friends. Phew. You all right, Laura? Promise you won't tell Papa or Mommy I've got these things stuck on my finger? Mm-hmm. Gracious, look at this. Some clever thief got into the museum and stole the McGillicuddy vase under their very nose. Oh! Papa, it's bad manners to read the newspaper at the table while we're eating. I'm sorry. There. Oh, Rubear, you're not eating. What's the matter? Rubear, your mother is an excellent cook, and her eucalyptus steak is usually your favorite. Delicious! Rubear, why aren't you eating? You're overeating again, Papa. You know you have a weight problem, so be careful. <laughs> Rubair, use your right hand and cut your steak into pieces. Oh, pardon me. I guess I'm just not hungry. What's got into that boy? It's very strange. <laughs> Oh. It's all right, Blue Bear. I told them all about it. Don't worry, we'll help you with your problem. Just show us your hand. <laughs> 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 I'm sorry I laughed, Rubear. It's partly my fault. This liquid soap will do the trick, Rubear. We'll get your hand all nice and slippery, and the jug will just slip right off. No good. This oil will be slippery than soap. <laughs> Make the junk slippery. Here, put it in hot water. The heat will expand the jug and it'll slip right off. Oh no, it's too hot. Come on, Rupert, you've got to be brave. I don't know. That's boiling hot. Hmm, oh, oh. <laughs> nothing works. I'm worried about Rubear. He hasn't eaten a thing for days now. Maybe he's got some kind of stomach flu. He says he feels all right, but he just stays in his room with the door closed. Laura, don't you know what's the matter with him? Mm-mm. I'm afraid I can't help. <laughs> what's that he's got? That explains everything. No wonder he was acting so funny. Yes, he didn't want us to know his finger was stuck. Hey, that's that valuable McGillicuddy vase that was stolen from the museum. I'm sure Rubert didn't steal it. He just got his finger stuck in it and couldn't get it off. Well, we've got to take it back to the museum. Remember, 
poor Rube Bear hadn't eaten anything for several days. I suppose his finger got thinner. Here, Rube Bear, you can have all the food you want. <laughs> you look as if you're starving, Rube Bear. <laughs> the poor boy's got to get his finger fat again. Keep eating, Rube Bear. <laughs> <laughs> 